This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Coverage you can count on. This is the first time Arlene Pinnock has spoken since the July confrontation. Now, early this morning, around 9.30, fishermen on the pier you see right behind me caught a great white shark. The drought has certainly reduced water levels. This whole area was once covered with it. And two years ago, I'd be standing in it. Now, that's all that's left. CBS 2's Art Barron is live in Mission Hills with the very latest developments. Art. And Juan, this is a frightening situation for residents out here this evening. We're talking about two gunmen who fatally shot three people early this morning at random, and those two gunmen are still at large at this hour. Here at the Mission Division Police Station, LAPD says it is adding extra officers, beefing up all of its resources. It's very unexpected, and it's hard on our family because she was such an innocent person. <laughs> it did not happen to her. Family members are devastated over the shooting death of Gloria Tovar. The elderly woman was picking up a friend for church early this morning, and today her family grieved near the crime scene. She was a godly person, was on her way to church, had loving people here from the church out here earlier that were waiting for her to be there. Her Toyota Camry at Fillmore Street and McGee Avenue in Pacoima was covered with a sheet where police say she was shot through the car windows. Family members can't find the words to describe their loss. Tragedy, the way that it occurred, they don't want to speak. Police say two other people were fatally shot in different locations in and near the city of San Fernando. Police believe the victims were shot at random. We have two male Hispanic shooters in a tan or a gold SUV, possibly a Tahoe, suburban or something of that, that nature. Just before six o'clock this morning, a family of five was on its way to church along the 1400 block of Sella Street in San Fernando. One of them, a 22 year old woman who was wheelchair reliant, was fatally shot. Another was gravely injured. About 35 minutes later, Mission Division officers got a call from LA Fire Station 91. Gunshots could be heard along the 13,000 block of Borden Avenue at the Silmar Recreational Center. A male Hispanic in his late 20s or early 30s was fatally shot. Then 10 minutes later, police responded to the 1200 block of Fillmore Street in Pacoima, where they found Gloria Tovar dead in her car. She also was the victim of a shooting. Witnesses heard the gunfire. All of us sitting here like a loud gunshot, like it's like boom. And long. Tovar was an usher at Guardian Angel Catholic Church, a member of the congregation for 30 years. This is like her, her second family here and everything, but now we're going to miss her. Art. Juan and Serene, this is the first time Arlene Pinnock has spoken since the July confrontation. As video shot by a driver shows, the 51-year-old grandmother was repeatedly punched in the head. He just pulled me brutally threw me down, start beating me, banging me, trying to kill me, trying to beat me to death, t take my life away for no reason. I did nothing to him. Strong allegations against CHP officer Daniel Andrew, a defendant in her civil rights lawsuit. With her attorney by her side, Marlene Pinnock watched the entire video today for the very first time, showing an incident with a CHP officer July 1st on the 10 freeway near the La Brea exit, where she received repeated blows to the head. I, mean, I can't believe that he just threw me down and started beating me and, and, and treating me ugly and, and making me feel um, nasty by exposing me. Pinnock says she feared for her life yeah. and claims the officer with a CHP for a year and a half ripped her clothes, exposing her buttocks. I knew I was exposed. I was trying to pull down my, my other garment under the dress that I had on the, 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 um, the other garment, the pink garment that hung down here. The CHP was responding to reports that a woman was walking on the roadway near the La Brea exit. When asked why Pinnock was walking there in the first place, her attorney jumped in, saying she was not under the influence of alcohol or an illegal substance at the time. As she could potentially face uh, uh, charges for a misdemeanor or an infraction. Pinnock says she still suffers from bruising and other physical pain. I have um, temple pain where it's coming, it's coming in and out like it's moving around in my temple. Um, I have a tooth problem. Pinnock says the CHP officer in question should be fired and she's grateful to the person who shot the video. And the video uh, footage helped to prove that what I'm saying is the truth and I am really grateful for that. Pinnock still receives treatment for her injuries, and as for the officer named in the lawsuit, CHP will not confirm his identity until the investigation is complete. Now, we spoke to them today, and a spokesperson tells us that the investigation should be complete in several weeks. 
And Art, what did the CHP have to say about the status of the officer involved? The officer involved is currently assigned to non-road patrol duties pending the outcome of that investigation. Back to you. All right, thank you so much. Well, the severe drought does have one upside. It's creating a new gold rush here in California. Low water levels are exposing areas where gold can be found. KCALINE's Art Barron takes us to Lytle Creek in San Bernardino County, where prospectors say things haven't been this good since the gold rush of 1849. It looked like a second gold rush, 1849, all over again. Max Maxilov enjoys the excitement of finding gold. He hopes to strike it rich. Now in a twist, the severe drought is creating excitement here, exposing gold that otherwise would not be found. It's all gold. And take a look. This is the gold he and his prospecting partners found only an hour after we arrived. In the mid-1800s, people from all over the country heard of a place called California and the gold it held in its mountains and streams. The gold rush was on. 60 miles from Los Angeles, gold prospectors at Lytle Creek panned for gold, used sluice boxes and metal detectors. In the back of their minds, they know the average price of gold is selling at $1,300 a troy ounce. The severe drought allows them to find gold in areas that would normally be difficult to access, newly exposed nooks and crannies. And right here, there was no way you could ever walk across the stream the way we're walking across it here. It was always moving too fast. The mountains in the distance should be snow-capped this time of year. It feels more like a summer afternoon. I'm 50 some odd years old and I have never had water levels in this area this low. Kevin Hoagland, executive director of Gold Prospectors Association of America, says the drought is creating a small gold rush in Southern California. A lot of times you would see maybe just the husband or somebody out just spending a little bit of time out prospecting, but now you're seeing the whole family out. The drought has certainly reduced water levels. This whole area was once covered with it, and two years ago I'd be standing in it. Now, that's all that's left. Now it's exposed, we can dig it, uh, it's right on the surface. People are purchasing simple equipment such as pans and sluice boxes at supply stores like this one in West Covina. So they'll buy two, three, four pans and a shovel or two and then um, take their kids up to the uh, San Gabriel River. Armed with the simple equipment, anyone can look for gold so long as it's not on someone else's property or violates an existing gold claim. Although revised many times, an 1872 mining law, still on the books today, allows for a private mining claim on public lands with locatable mineral deposits to be filed. It protects 20 acres. That means no one other than the claim holders can prospect for gold there. The Gold Prospectors Association of America has a gold claim filed with the Bureau of Land Management in this portion of Lytle Creek. What they find is taxable if it's sold in the marketplace. You need to know that you're on the right place. You know, you just can't walk onto somebody's claim and start prospecting. The newly exposed areas offer a new sense of excitement. Right there. Jack Barber from Temecula has been doing this for 21 years. We found him digging into dry dirt, once difficult to get to because it was once covered by water. This was back down underneath, I don't know if you can see this great big rock right here. It was right down underneath this rock right here. So there might be more down in there. Although tiny, each time he dug deeper, he'd find larger pieces of gold. The water level was actually up here just two years ago. So it's, it's dropped down this far to, to make it um, accessible to areas we couldn't dig in the past. Experienced prospectors say the drought is exposing gold that has never been touched by human hands. We can go back over some of the old miners' tailings, uh, areas that have worked in the past, and find gold that they've overlooked. Kevin Hoagland says most of the time people just starting out may find $5 in gold, but if they're lucky, they might take home as much as $200 worth. And while you may not make a fortune, it is a great way to spend time with a family. Come out, spend some family time, have a blast, just get out, get out, get away from doing this at the TV. Chances are you'll probably find some gold to show off to your friends. Wow, that was KCALINE's Art Barron reporting there. Gold hunters tell us before you go looking for gold though, do your homework. Find out where you can prospect by checking with your local or regional National Forest Service office.